Powell. I am a curator of quilts and folk art studies at Michigan State University Museum. I am also director of the state Michigan Traditional Arts Program, which is based at Michigan State University. So I am one of the uh, two individuals tonight who are the speakers for this program. And joining me is Lynn Swanson, who, Lynn, can you introduce yourself? I'm Lynn Swanson. I'm the Cultural Collections Manager here at MSU Museum. Thanks. And you know what? We've worked together for, for years and um, we, we love sharing information about the collections. We love seeing the collections used. And we're so glad that you, all of you are here tonight to learn a little bit more about our collections and how they've been formed and how we use them and how we care for them. So here's the format for tonight. Um, uh, first of all, I'm going to say a land acknowledgement and give a little bit of the credits. And then we're going to segue into a um, 33 minute uh, pre-recorded video tape that was done with Lynn and I in the collections building. So you can see um, how we, if you can visually see how we store our collections. You get a feel for behind the scenes. And then we're going to go live to a Q and A um, that we're fully prepared to answer your questions. So, so let me start out by saying that um, we are at Michigan State University. It's based in East Lansing and Michigan State University occupies the ancestral, um, traditional and contemporary lands of the Anishinaabek, the Three Fires Confederacy of Ojibwa, Odawa and Potawatomi peoples. The university resides on land ceded in the 1819 Treaty of Saginaw. This is important at any time to say, but it's especially important because this is a program that was developed in association, tonight's program was developed in association with a special ex exhibition, Kindred, uh, the traditional arts of the Little Traverse Bay Band of Odawa, an Anishinaabek group. So um, we're, we're, we're acknowledging that we are residing on what was once their land. Um, I also wanted to say that this particular program and the exhibition were funded uh, by the Michigan State University uh, Federal Credit Union and also uh, additional support was provided by the Michigan Traditional Arts Program based at MSU. Um, during the course of watching this, you all watching this 33 minute uh, video, pre-recorded video, you still will be able to post um, questions in the chat. Lynn and I and two students, Matt and Sarah, will be uh, watching those questions and we'll try to answer them in real time as you are multitasking, also watching the video. And then at the end of the 33 minutes, uh, Lynn and the uh, video will end and Lynn and I will be focused completely on questions that you post in the Q&A section of this, um, Zoom for, this Zoom format. And that at that point, Sarah and Matt will read off to us any of the questions. So I think at this point we can begin to watch the video and I am going to activate that. I think we did it, uh, the, the link to it. I've got, um, Denise Blair, who is our education director at the MSU Museum on standby to help with this as well as Sarah and Matt, but hopefully there will be no problems. But we did record this just within the last, what, Lynn, a month? A month. A month, yeah. And we hope you'll enjoy it. So here we go. Okay, we're back. And um, except for that little hiccup at the beginning, so we had to repeat a little bit of the start of the video.
video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, during that period of time, I was unable because I had my screen um, uh, maxed out. I couldn't see incoming uh, questions. So I'm now going to rely on Matt and Sarah for uh, helping us know what questions have been asked and not answered yet and help us out here. So Matt and Sarah, you can unmute yourselves. I don't think we have any questions yet. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, well, let's see. We would love to know if uh, Lynn and I especially would love to know if uh, this helped you understand what functions a museum has and how how our collections formed and how we take care of them. We would be keen to know if this helped you understand those functions and um, well, behind the scene actions. I also wish to let you know that if, if you're interested in using collections for community projects or research, uh, please contact me um, and I can uh, provide access to the collection. So Kurt Dewhurst is asking, can you share any upcoming collection or research projects coming up that will enhance the MSU Museum's collections? Hmm. Um, let's see. Well, I, I think we alluded uh, to one that is in process right now um, in the pre-recorded session, but I, maybe Lynn and I can both elaborate on it in that. Um, this porcupine quill work project uh, is with those partners around the state, the uh, Zibbawing uh, Cultural Center at Mount Pleasant, the Yowing Museum, uh, which is the Grand Traverse uh, Bands of Ottawa um, and Chippewa Indians. And then there's the um, Ojibwa Cultural Center uh, Foundation at uh, on Manitoulin Island. And we meet. Uh, once a month, uh, we talk about what what you know documentation we want to do. We talk about what kinds of questions Minnie Wabanimki, our primary field worker, should be asking. And I should say Minnie is full blooded. She's from Grand Tra Traverse. Um, she she's an elder, and so you know there are a certain amount of knowledge she already carries into the documentation process because she is an insider. And, um, but she also is a professional uh, photojournalist and a fabulous photographer. So when she goes in there, she's wearing sort of multiple lenses, multiple hats as she does her documentation. And she's coming up with great ideas of how you can do research on this. And one of her, her frameworks now is that she wants to uh, document seasonally so that there's a certain time of the year that you gather sweet grass, which is used on a lot of the um, artwork, uh, baskets and quill work. And so she was just out with a group of, of, of family members uh, uh, from the Little Traverse Bay Band um, last weekend, I think, or week, two weekends ago. And it was a gorgeous Michigan day. And she was out there with this family gathering sweet grass at a lake. And she got a friend of hers to bring along a drone so that the documentation is now not only from ground level, but from drone level, you know, getting the wide scope of what um, is being documented. And because she is a native person and she's talking with the people she's documenting, they are telling her also what they would like to have documented. So it's a very nice collaboration. This all will eventually result in a book, um, a uh, exhibition that will be at those other museums. And hopefully it can come to Michigan State University. And um, we have a pause on collecting at Michigan State right now. So we're hoping that the, uh, the 
pause will be unpaused so that we can uh, gather objects from these people that we are documenting. Um, but uh, I think it's a good example of how uh, this research and collaboration enriches our understanding of what we have already in our collections. And I was going to add that um, in a couple of weeks, the whole team from um, all four institutions will be getting together at MSU for the first time since COVID. And um, we're going to be looking at the Kindred exhibit, which is on view right now at MSU Museum, and just starting to plan our own exhibit of cool work. So we're excited. And then as a team, we will be going to Manitoulin Island also to look at their collections up there and to meet with artists. I, I should also say that that Odawa quilt is another example. That Odawa quilt that was on the table and I was the cover of the Michigan quilt book. Um, as it turns out, Minnie Wabanemke, her grandmother made one of those quilts and her cousin has one of those quilts. And I think we know the existence now of six of those quilts and, um, and collector just yesterday brought one to our attention. And so Minnie and I are working with um, the, uh, on an exhibition proposal to have an exhibit of all of the known quilts, these Odawa quilts up in um, Peshabi town at the museum, Iawing Museum. But Minnie is going and interviewing elders in her community. I will be doing some of the archival research because um, we know that the quilts were probably made by women who in the church basement at a uh, Indian mission church in Peshabi town. I know now, I've, I know where the uh, records, the archival records are for those, that church there in um, Wisconsin uh, at Marquette University. So, I will be reading those online. So we're figuring out ways of collaborating. And I think that's one of the beauties of the kind of research that we're doing, these collaborations is we're finding out, well, who can do what and what makes most sense to be done by individuals in teams. And, but we're all working on the same goal is to have a better understanding of what these objects, which are now in museums, uh, mean to the peoples who made them, the communities, the cultural communities that made them, and what they can mean to other people in terms of understanding those cultural legacies and those histories. So Andrea Sato is asking if there's going to be a virtual version of our Kindred exhibit. Oh, hmm. You know, the, the Kindred exhibit was actually uh, put together originally by the Crooked Tree Arts Center in Petoskey, Michigan. And the curators for that were uh, Liz Erlewine, who was the director of the Crooked Tree Arts Center, and Eric Hemingway, who is the archivist at the Little Traverse Bay Band of Odawa. And um, they were gracious enough to allow us to have the exhibition here at Michigan State University when it was only supposed to be up north at the Crooked Tree um, Art Gallery, but we thought it was such a beautiful exhibition from a very decidedly native perspective that it would be nice to have it at another venue and have people in the Lansing area also get to see it and you know, community members and MSU faculty, staff and students. If there will be a, a virtual version of it, that would be up to um, Liz and Eric. Ours will probably have a virtual version though. Oh yeah, <laughs> Our, the porcupine quill work. Because yes. again, um, you know, Minnie sends little clips of the footage that she's uh, recording in video and still photographs. And we're, we're all envisioning this amazing uh, piece that will have both a, a, a physical manifestation as an exhibition and a virtual. Any other questions there? 
um, I, forgive me, but I'm looking on a computer screen. It's almost like looking on my iPhone where the, I, I would need a magnifying glass to, to read the questions. So um, any, any others that are out there? Or Matt or Sarah, I'll put you on the spot to, after listening to this. Do you have any questions, MSU students? I'd well, love to know, um, I guess, what, um, what, what are some of your favorite pieces that like are a part of the collection? Oh, that is a good question. I think they're very personal. I can say for me, I'll speak for myself, um, I, you know, very personal, but um, since my, one of my main research areas uh, as a scholar is uh, quilt studies, those Odawa quilts, I've, I've absolutely loved them. And I, I have dealt with thousands and thousands and thousands of quilts and to see this body of Odawa quilts that are historical, that are very unique. Um, you know, they, it excites me that we own three of them here at Michigan State. Um, but I also uh, have another very favorite one, which is one of those quill boxes that was made by Yvonne Walker Kishik. And in it, uh, she portrays the four stages of a woman's life. And that, that box has been loaned out to a number of other um, museums, including recently uh, a museum in the Netherlands. And I think, it, I think Lynn would correct me, but I think it also went to um, the Minnesota um, Minneapolis Museum of Art. But it, it's, it's a very special one. As it happens, um, Yvonne Walker Kishik, we helped the tribe nominate her for a national heritage award given by the National Endowment for the Arts. And she got one um, several years ago and uh, was awarded in a special ceremony in Washington, DC at the Library of Congress. So it is a favorite um, because I also know Yvonne, I know her family, but I also think as a work of art, it's extraordinary. Now, that was my favorites, but Lynn, how about you? You know, I don't have any favorites. I, I can't pick between them all, but I really, um, I love my job and I love um, being able to work with these pieces and um, I'm honored to be able to care for them and also to share them with whoever may need them and want to use them in research or, or uh, you know, loans or whatever. Well, we encourage you. Um, everyone who is on this program tonight, uh, if you have questions, uh, you can follow them up with us. We're very available um, via email uh, through, you know, contacting uh, through, through the main museum office. Um, you know, if you have additional questions, we'd be happy to ask um, and answer them, you know, to our best of our abilities. And uh, we also encourage all of you to think about who are just starting out on careers or thinking about career changes or retirement. We love uh, volunteers and we love, um, we love to work with students as they find a pathway into museum work and also you know, enjoy working with the objects and also with those people, the research surrounding it. I think with that, I will say one thing, and that is we do have a little survey. We would love for you to uh, take, it only takes a moment. Um, I, I don't know, Matt and Sarah. Yeah. Um, Matt and Sarah, um, could you put the link to that in the, the chat? Um, and while they're doing that, I'll mention that there are two more programs coming up that are related to the Kindred exhibition. Uh, one is, I think, um, July 20th. Um, do you have it there, Matt or Sarah or Denise? Um, uh, it will be an interview with 
uh, five of the bead workers whose work is in the kindred exhibit. They're um, three sisters and two of their daughters. So a close knit group of wonderful bead workers. And then I think it's July 26. Um, somebody would have to double check me there. That is a program where there's a conversation between Wasan Dillard, a hand, a person who does hand weaving, a Michigan Heritage Awardee, and Yvonne Walker Kishuk, the Michigan Awardee, as, as well as a National Endowment for the Arts uh, National um, Heritage Fellowship, the Quill Worker. So those two women um, are going to be interviewed by myself, or in that, or sorry by uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Kurt Dewhurst uh, in that last program. And then I'm gonna be the moderator for the discussion with the uh, uh, bead workers. Yes, thank you very much, Matt. Uh, so the discussions are on the 20th and then on the 26th of July. They're free Zoom programs. We just want people to register so we can, um, uh, know who's coming and, and we can communicate later with you all. So thank you again. And um, please do take that moment and fill out the uh, evaluation form. And we hope to see you at an upcoming program. Thank you so much. Thank you.